Halloween might take place on just one night of the year, but that doesn't mean the excitement of spooky season can't begin long before the main event. And it's not all just about costumes and candy. In fact, there are plenty of ways to conjure up a total spook fest without having to break the bank. From puking pumpkins to gruesome cuisine, prepare to be inspired as I show you some simple yet terrifyingly effective Halloween crafts. Monster Suckers Digging through your candy after a long night of trick-or-treating is one of the most exciting parts of Halloween when you're a kid. But when it's no longer socially acceptable to go knocking on strangers' doors, it's your turn to make Halloween as awesome as possible. So why not whip up your own treats like these super cool monster suckers? All you need are some Jolly Ranchers or other colorful hard-boiled candies, some candy eyes, and some lollipop sticks. First, preheat your oven to around 275 degrees. Fahrenheit and cover a baking tray with parchment paper. For each monster, you're gonna need about three candies. Just choose your favorite colors and place them next to each other so they're touching. You should be able to fit about four lollipops on one tray. Just make sure to leave enough room to add the sticks later. Pop the tray in the oven for eight to 10 minutes or until the candies have melted to your liking. But keep an eye out so they don't completely turn into a liquid. As soon as you take them out, place a lollipop stick at one end, rolling it to coat it with melted candy. Let the suckers dry completely on the tray. Then carefully remove the paper from the back and voila, you're a certified confectioner. Before we really get those creative juices flowing, why not treat yourself by smashing those like and subscribe buttons and playing around with that little bell icon. In return, you'll find amazing new content in your subscription box every day. And I promise that ain't no trick. Now let's get stuck back in. Meathead Centerpiece Throwing a Halloween-themed dinner party? I've got you covered, bro. Why not terrify your guests while satisfying their appetites with this gruesome meathead centerpiece? To make it, you'll need to get your hands on a plastic skull decoration. It may not be a household item, but you can usually find something like this at your local craft store at this time of year. First, cover the skull in some trusty saran wrap. After all, you're gonna be working with food and you don't want your guests to get a taste of plastic. Next, grab some strips of delicious prosciutto ham and start laying them in all directions across the skull until it's completely covered. The end result should look something like a mummy made out of meat. So go ham with it. Get it, ham? Once the skull is completely covered, pierce a hole in the saran wrap covering the eye sockets and insert two stuffed green olives, which look like petrified eyeballs. Pop your meathead in the center of a large serving platter, surround it with a selection of cheese or other snacks, and there you have it, a scrumptious centerpiece your guests will be head over heels for. Puking Pumpkin the most effective pumpkin carving requires a steady hand and heaps of creativity. But I'm about to show you a super simple, unconventional design that'll wow your friends and family every time. After all, who wouldn't love a puking pumpkin? First up, get yourself a pumpkin. Any size will do, but remember, the bigger the pumpkin, the more mixture you'll need to create the puke later on. Hollow that bad boy out, then carve a simple mouth shape on one side. Note that the higher you carve the mouth, the more vinegar you'll need later on for the puke to reach it. Once that's done, grab a permanent marker and draw on some funny screwed up eyes. Or if you're feeling extra crafty, you could carve those too. For the puke, create a simple mixture of water and baking soda. You can guesstimate how much you'll need based on the size of your pumpkin, but it's better to have too much than not enough. Add a few drops of green food dye and stir that in to create the perfect shade of vomit green. Then take the lid off your pumpkin and pour the mixture into the base. To make that sucker spew, just pour in some vinegar and watch as the foamy mixture rises up and pours out of its mouth. Looks like me last Friday night. Balloon Ghosts what better way to decorate your house during spooky season than with a load of adorable ghouls? And these ghosts look just like emojis come to life. If this 21st century spook tickles your fancy, all you need is some white balloons, white paper or card, tissue paper, 
colored card, scissors, and a hot glue gun. First, you'll need to cut shapes for the eyes, mouth, and tongue from your colored card, as well as two cartoonish arms cut from the white paper. Make sure to leave room for a small tab at the end of each arm, because that's how you'll attach them later. Now, it's time to inflate your balloons. To measure up your sheet of white tissue paper against the inflated balloon, wrap it around like a skirt and then allow a desired length to drape down below the base. Cut the sheet down to the size you require and then use your scissors to create a scalloped effect along the bottom edge for that ghoulish effect. Using a hot glue gun, stick the tissue paper about halfway up the balloon. Then fold the tabs of your arms and then glue those on either side. For the finishing touches, carefully glue on the ghost's cheeky facial expression. Malevolent spirits have no business being this cute. Pumpkin Pops there are plenty of ways to spruce up shop-bought candy to make your house stand out when the kids come knocking. Just take a look at these pumpkin pops, aren't they adorable? To make your own, all you'll need is some orange and green tissue paper, pennies, your choice of lollipops, and some funky twine. You might be thinking, where do the pennies come in? But all will be revealed. First up, cut up the green tissue paper into circles that measure about 5.5 inches across and the orange paper into circles that measure 4.5 inches across. Now, lay the orange circle down first, followed by the larger green circle on top, and then plop a penny in the very center. That penny is going to help the lollipops stand up when you display them upside down. But if you're making these for young kids, you could always ditch the pennies and just display the candy in a bowl instead. With the foundations laid, you can now wrap the tissue paper up and around the sucker. You'll see that the green paper will stick out further to contrast with the orange. Now, take your twine and tie it neatly around the tissue to hold it in place. For the finishing touch, use a permanent marker to add a classic jack-o'-lantern face. So simple, yet so effective. Melting Rainbow Pumpkin The classic Halloween color palette consists of orange, black, green, and purple. But if you have a more vibrant outlook on life, this melting rainbow pumpkin might just be the craft for you. All you'll need to pull it off is a white pumpkin or a regular pumpkin painted white, a selection of colored crayons, a hot glue gun, and a trusty blow dryer. Before you begin, make sure you pop your pumpkin on top of a cloth or towel, because it's about to get messy. Decide what colors you're going to work with and peel or cut the paper from the crayon. Then, arrange them pointing outwards around the stem of the pumpkin and use a dab of hot glue to stick each crayon down. Before you commit, it's best to think about which colors will complement each other best, unless you're an agent of chaos and don't care about the traditional color wheel. Now, for the fun part. It's time to turn on your blow dryer and go to town on those crayons. Here's a top tip. Point your blow dryer at random angles to help the wax spread instead of dripping straight down. And if you need more color, just add another crayon and blast again. Who knew Halloween could be so joyous? Mummified Pumpkins Carving pumpkins is great fun, but it can also be messy and time-consuming. So if Halloween is just around the corner and your front porch is looking suspiciously bare, fear not. I have a quick and easy solution for you. Before you start, you'll need to gather the following things. A pumpkin of your choosing, some gauze or bandages, black string, hot glue, a staple gun, and some black buttons. I bet you've got most of that lying around the house already, right? I personally think small pumpkins look the cutest, but you can choose any size. Just remember that you'll need more materials. Instead of reaching for the carving tools, simply wrap your pumpkins in strips of gauze until it starts to resemble a mummified head. Once you're happy with your design, just hot glue the gauze to hold it in place. Then glue two black buttons on for eyes. I prefer to use two different sized buttons to give the pumpkin that dude I've been mummified for a thousand years look. Glue down a length of black twine for the mouth and use a staple gun to give it that Jack Skellington effect. Totally mess free and your pumpkin will stand out from the rest. Poisoned Chocolate Apples Remember the poisoned apple from Snow White? I'm about to show you how to recreate it. Only these apples will probably send you into a sugar coma rather than a sleeping death. To make this Disney-inspired craft, just grab yourself some apples, some lollipop sticks, white chocolate, green food dye, a piping bag, and some toothpicks. Ready? After popping a lollipop stick into each apple, you'll want to melt your chocolate. So, 
Break it up, chuck it in a saucepan, and melt it over a low heat for around 4-5 to five minutes, or until it's turned into a satisfying goop. To get that toxic green hue, add a few drops of green food dye. Alternatively, you could just pop the chocolate chunks into a microwave-safe bowl and heat it for around 35 seconds, stirring well and reheating when necessary. Whichever way you melt it, you'll need to pour your chocolate into a piping bag. And if you don't have one of these, you could always just cut a hole in the corner of a Ziploc bag. Using a steady hand, start by piping the features onto your apple, two circles for the eyes, and an upside-down heart shape for the nose. Then. Fill in the surrounding areas by piping on the chocolate and using a toothpick to shape it, creating a dripping effect around the bottom half of the apple. Leave them out to set for a few hours and serve. Would you take one of these tasty treats from a haggard old witch? Spooky Pins Costumes might be a big part of Halloween, but there are also ways to incorporate a bit of spooky chic into your regular wardrobe, like with these homemade pins. They're subtle enough to wear in the lead-up to the big event while still spreading some nightmarish cheer. To make them, you'll want to get hold of some mini googly eyes, plain hair clips or brooch pins, a sharp knife, a rolling pin, some oven-baked clay, and, of course, your trusty hot glue gun. Make sure to grab the right colored clay for what you're planning to make, orange if you're making a pumpkin pin, black if you're making a bat, white for a cute ghost, and so on. First, warm the clay in your hands by kneading it a little. Then use your rolling pin to roll the piece flat until it's about a fourth of an inch thick. Next, use your knife to cut out the Halloween shapes. Or if you don't want a freestyle like me, you could always get hold of some Halloween cookie cutters. Then put them on a baking sheet and then whack them in the oven, following the instructions on the clay packet, of course. Once they're done baking, let them cool. Then you can glue your pin or hair clip to the back and add googly eyes and a drawn-on smile in permanent marker to the front. Fall fashion never looks so good. Gruesome Punch No good Halloween party is complete without a big bowl of punch, and boy have I got a recipe for you. After all, what could be more seasonal than a blood-red beverage filled with floating eyeballs and ghostly hands? To whip this up at home, you'll need to get a hold of some powder-free latex gloves, cocktail sticks, lychees or white grapes, blueberries, red food dye, cranberry juice, ginger ale, lychee juice, and if you're feeling extra freaky and you're an adult, you can add an alcoholic spirit of your choice, like vodka. First, fill the gloves with water, tie them at the ends, and then pop them in the freezer overnight until they're completely solid. To make those petrified eyeballs, just place a single blueberry at the center of each lychee, or peeled white grape, and then use a cocktail stick dipped in red food dye to add some gruesome vein detail. For the punch, fill the bottom of a large punch bowl with your freshly made eyeballs and pour over 12 cups of cranberry juice, 3 cups of ginger ale, and 2 cups of lychee juice. If you're planning on keeping things PG, you can stop there. But if you're gonna be doing the monster mash till the early hours, throw in some alcoholic spirit like vodka if you're an adult. Remove the gloves from your ghostly frozen hands, plop them in, and your terrifyingly tasty punch is good to go. Edible Intestines do you want to serve your dinner guests something that looks like the work of a psychopathic surgeon? Then listen up! Here's what you'll need. Some cinnamon rolls, a large deep baking tray, vanilla extract, butter, milk, powdered sugar, and red food dye. First, take your pre-made cinnamon rolls and gently unravel them so you end up with a bunch of sugary sweet worms. Grab your baking tray and loop the first worm along the top in a wiggly pattern. Then follow this all the way down the pan until the whole thing is packed full of guts. You want to create the look of human intestines with their natural whirls and dead ends. So there's no rules for this part, just keep going till you're satisfied. But try not to pack them in too tightly, because the dough will rise slightly in the oven. Speaking of ovens, it's now time to pop your creation in at around 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes, or until the cinnamon rolls look golden brown. While they're cooking, whip up a quick vanilla frosting by whisking together 4 tablespoons of melted butter, 2-3 to three tablespoons of milk, 2.5 cups of powdered sugar, and a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Add a few drops of red food dye to create the perfect bloody color, then pour the gruesome mix over the freshly baked intestines. Use a spoon to spread the sauce evenly and push it between the cracks of the rolls for extra definition. Mmm, looks almost too gross to eat.
Spider suckers. Do you suffer from arachnophobia? Well, I might just have the cure for you. These too cute to handle spider suckers. They look super fun and they're incredibly easy to make too. All you need are some 12 inch black pipe cleaners, some googly eyes, scissors, and glue. Got it? Let's get going then. Depending on how long you want the creepy crawly's legs to be, you can either cut the pipe cleaners in half or keep their full length. The important part is to use four per sucker. Then, wrap one side of the pipe cleaners all the way around the lollipop stem and pull it tight, so you have four legs sticking out from either side. Then, flip the lollipop over and separate the legs from one another, bending the ends inward to create little feet. It can be a little tricky to get your spider to balance properly, so try bending the back feet closer to the head of the sucker. Once you're satisfied with the positioning of the legs, dab a little glue on the back of the googly eyes and place them in the center. The kids will either love them or they'll run away screaming, leaving you to eat them yourself. Pull Apart Pennywise Pennywise the Clown is a particularly terrifying part of Halloween, but what about an edible Pennywise? You may not have heard of the Pull Apart Cupcake trend, but these giant iced creations are a great alternative to a full-blown cake, which ensures everyone gets the perfect little bite. Plus, they'll save a whole lot of time and effort and look just as great. Intrigued? First up, you'll need about 14 vanilla cupcakes, although the amount depends on how big you want your creation to be. Arrange those bad boys in the rough shape of Pennywise's bulbous head, starting with two arrow tips consisting of five cupcakes each, followed by a little triangle and one cupcake at the bottom for his chin. Next, grab a piping bag full of tasty buttercream icing and draw the outline of the shape, working your way inwards until the whole thing is covered in icing. Smooth it all out with a knife or the back of a spoon and then refill the piping bag with buttercream. But before you do, you'll need to add a few drops of orange food dye to match Pennywise's flame-colored hair. Carefully draw out the outline of his hairdo, then repeat the same pattern of filling in the shape and smoothing it over. You can then use a fork to create textured grooves that'll really make it pop. For the finishing touches, you'll need some colored icing gel, blood red for his nose and clown makeup, black for details like the rings around those piercing yellow eyes, and white for his goofy teeth. I'm sure the Losers Club would have no problem pulling this cake apart. Ghostly Garlands Festive garlands are a staple at Christmas time, but who said Halloween couldn't get a look in too? So why not spruce up your home with this ghoulish garland? It's super easy to make, and all you'll need is some cheesecloth or any other white cloth, some black twine, plastic practice golf balls or ping pong balls, a permanent marker, and some hot glue. Each ghost is made up of four squares of cloth doubled up. So the first thing you'll want to do is cut your cloth into roughly 10 inch wide squares before staggering them on top of each other. Make sure they don't line up exactly because the raggedy effect is part of the ghostly appeal. To create the head of each ghost, cut a section of twine and double knot the end, then thread it through the holes of the plastic golf ball. Alternatively, you could just pierce holes in a ping pong ball. Next, find the middle point of the cheesecloth squares and pull the weave apart slightly or just make a hole in it and feed the twine of the golf balls through. You can also add a dab of hot glue to the top of each ball to help hold the cloth in place. Use a permanent marker to add an adorable little face, then thread your cheerful little spirits onto a long piece of twine and hang. Constellation Pumpkins Part of the joy of pumpkin carving is that you can create pretty much anything you want, even though it might feel like you've seen it all before. But I'll bet you've never heard of a constellation pumpkin. Here's what you'll need for this twist on a classic craft. A pumpkin of your choosing, basic carving tools, tape, black spray paint, a ruler, and a drill with assorted drill bits. First things first, you'll need to cut a lid in your pumpkin and hollow that sucker out using a spoon. You know how to do that, right? With the messy part out of the way, you'll want to tape up the stem of your freshly carved pumpkin to protect it from the coat of black spray paint you're about to apply. For this bit, you're gonna want to be outside to avoid inhaling the fumes of the spray paint. And it's a good idea to place the pumpkin on an old cloth or towel first too. Once the paint is dry, you can remove the tape and start planning your design. You can pick whatever constellation you like from online and trace the stars onto the pumpkin with a permanent marker. Then use your drill to drill holes through each one. Take your ruler and connect the stars with straight lines, then cut them out with a sharp knife or a V-chisel. Finally, pop a tea light in the bottom and voila! 
staring at the twinkling night sky has never been easier. Paper Jack-O-Lanterns If you're a little OCD, the gooey insides of a freshly carved pumpkin probably don't appeal to you, but these elegant paper jack-o'-lanterns will be a welcome addition to any mantelpiece or dinner table, and they're super easy to make. All you'll need is some colored or patterned paper of your choice, orange if you're feeling traditional, scissors, double-sided tape, twine, hot glue, and some sticks. To make each pumpkin, you'll need two 8.5 inch by 11 inch sheets of colored card. First, cut each piece of card into five identical 1.5 inch wide strips. Now, listen carefully. Cut each piece into one 7 inch strip, two 9 inch, and keep the remaining two at 11.5 inches long. It's important to remember that you'll need two sheets of paper for one pumpkin, meaning each one consists of two 7 inch strips four 9-inch strips, and four 11-inch strips. Capiche? Now, you'll need to fold each strip into an accordion formation. Once that's done, tape the two sets with the same lengths together to form a circle, like so. You should end up with one circle from the 7-inch strips, two from the 9-inch strips, and two from the 11-inch strips. Now to layer them all up. Start by placing a small dab of hot glue in the center of the 7-inch circle and pinch it tightly for a few seconds until it dries creating a textured medallion. Follow the same procedure with the other circles, and then glue them in a stack with a 7-inch on top, then 9-inch, then 11-inch, another 11-inch, and 9-inch again on the bottom. That should create the perfect pumpkin shape. And all that's left to do is hot glue a stick, paper leaves, and some twine on top to finish it off. Are you planning to have a go at any of these ingenious Halloween crafts? Let me know how it goes in the comments down below. And thanks for watching, guys!